Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mega Mode series. Of course, I'm here again with Never Named. As I said in the last episode, Hello. we're going to be telling more stories of the space game that Never Named is um, <laughs> Never Named has been talking about. But we're going to play Shade this time, so there's probably going to be some deaths here and there. Let's hope not, but possibly. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to check um, Never Named, check, unlock. So we're going to actually go and check what we've got left to do with this little fella. Um, Shade unlocks a... Shade unlocks, I see. Okay. So we need to do kill the lich, take damage, and live. And boss rush with the shade is also one. Ooh, I think we should do boss rush. Let's try that out. Go for it. Yeah, there are boss rush unlocks in this version. They're not in the public version yet, but... I'm going to try one Neither. normal one, but I might do a rainbow one after. Oh, wait, why do I go, gonna go through the whole rotation? Oh, the beyond? Oh, right, you can go to the beyond. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I can say I don't know why I did that. Wait. I have the buttons disabled. Um. Well, considering we just saw a beyond elevator, I think we may have uh, someone to blame for that. Hold on. Uh, I have a possible solution. Try uh, in the console TP uh, like 50 50. TP space 50 space 50. Hey. There we go. I figured right. that. Uh, don't go back in. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you know. Um, let's just do a normal run. <laughs> yeah, the, the I might TP be able to fix it one takes you. That was so funny. The TP command. Uh, it takes you to those coordinates on the current level. Yeah, and I, I need figured to remember that, that. I need that. I remember. I figured that because I don't know the exact coordinates of a place in the breach, but I figured that fifty by fifty would be somewhere in the breach. Yeah. So let me let me just try right. this one more time, but this time I'm gonna make sure I go back first. Nope, it's just always to the beyond. There are only two floors <laughs> in this purgatory. Um, wait, I just realized something. This isn't a mod that broke this. I'm just on a save file that doesn't have boss rush unlocked. Oh! <laughs> I haven't done any of the elevator shortcuts yet. Oh, you dumb cunt. Okay, well, guess we're trying to do them this uh, video as well. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I am an idiot. pretty funny i was like yeah. what the hell it's so broken and i'm like oh yeah you actually have to unlock these i forgot you had to unlock them i just think elevator shortcut runs are boring as fuck so i don't like unlocking them it's like oh, give up know, all of your keys and get no items fun once you've unlocked them once you've unlocked them they're unlocked so that's true yeah better to get him done out of the way with, but still, we'll see how the shape run goes. I need to kill the Lich, so maybe I can try and do that. Uh, if I remember correctly, our uh, spacebar item is stealth, right? Yes, it's stealth. Which means that you can use it if you need time to reposition from enemies, or you or can steal. use it to steal. Yeah. Let's Shade see how long does I can start last with, with powerful stats, but that's because he uh, uh, he's a fragile boy. Very particular stat area. He's a very fragile boy. Ghost v Ghost, the ultimate battle. <clears throat> but yes, what I was saying at the that explosion yeah. pushed the fucking shotgunner into me. Oh my god. That was some bullshit. Skill issue. Um, someone should make a mod that changes it so that when it says uh, what killed you, it just says killed by skill issue. <laughs> that seems like a blazy mod through and through, that does. It's 
so what I was saying about last episode, which I don't know how uh, close you're going to release these apart. Very close. So it'll this be, might it'll be, a... be uh, Monday and Thursday. Yeah, so, so it'll be like a few days. We're recording these, like, uh, we only started recording this a few minutes after the last one, but yeah. they're going to come out like a day apart. So for context, last time I was talking about Space Station 13 and regaling Turtle with some stories, and I started a story about... Uh, working taking the uh the cargo role which for those unfamiliar is a role in the game where you have to uh deliver supplies requisitioned by others yeah and um turtle unfortunately died uh before i could finish uh, that story well, I, but... I didn't really die the game fucked up and killed me <laughs> what happens when the game kills you turtle I died, but it was it, like you said. So, I so died. Sorry. My character yeah, you died. died. I, I I was not the cause of said death. So Turtle's dead. Oh yeah, I forgot. Shade can uh, sell health now. Yes, I know. I just noticed that. I'm very happy about it. Yeah, I decided to give it some use because. Yeah, because there's a lot of health in gun in Gungeon, so not much point in it doing nothing. Yeah, but... <clears throat> so I was working in cargo and I had no idea how the systems worked because I hadn't played that role before. And so someone was like, hey, can you send me this from storage? And my immediate response had to be, what? <laughs> how would I do that? <laughs> I think that's the thing as well. Like, I'm imagining a lot of people that play the game stick to their favorite roles and don't really branch out. So you could be asking someone... Someone might request something from storage, and you could be asking them, hey, how does that work? And they might not even be able to respond, because they probably haven't even played storage before. Possible. Oh, really? The purple? Um... Yeah, so the head of oper- Yeah, carry on. We're good to go. Okay, so before I got so rudely interrupted by, by Turtle's handmaiden, I, uh... Handmade. Endless bullets is just infinite range. <laughs> she got my girl from my handmaid. Yes, the chambermaid. The one who cleans up after you when you mess yourself. Go on, then. Go on then, bitch. Do it. Come on. Ah, oh, unhit item. Useful. Helpful. I love it. Fuck you. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I, I really want to do this and get the unlock, but every time it shows up, it shows up at the worst time. And I can never get it to show up at any other time. It's so annoying. Do you like to take an extra challenge while playing as the Shade? It's like, for fuck's sake, game, can you, like, chill out? So the head of operations had to come down to the cargo bay and explain to me like I was a dumb baby uh, how the systems worked, and I still didn't fully understand it. <laughs> but the... the uh, there was a group of miners on a nearby planet who were desperately, desperately requesting material. They needed <laughs> plasma um, for their uh, machines. And the mining role is especially dangerous because the planet is full of dangerous creatures. Yeah. And they were like, <sighs> this is urgent. We need this plasma. Go on, take it. What I'm so for? happy. It's the first time I've ever to, actually had it in a real a fucking run. fucking kiss on the cheek. It's the first time I've had it in a real run. Please don't let me die immediately. It's one of my favorite guns. I'm glad.
For those of you that don't know, this is, this is a gun that just every to every floor, it's completely random. Everything about it is completely random. It can fire different projectiles, different amount of projectiles, use different ammo, have different ammo. It's just all sorts of fucked. It's great. So what's it going to be this floor? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> it does good damage, but holy fuck does it suck. So, some floors it's gonna suck ass. That last floor was really good, but I got it when there was no enemies left. Yeah, so Really, you get a D20 now? You get a D20 now? You fucking idiot. The thing with Missing Gano is that I designed it such that... Yeah, technically, it can be something really overpowered, because I've not put any limits on how good its stats can be. Yeah. But I've also not put any limits on how bad they can be. Yes. So, so you can that's get the trade-off. Just as good, but just as bad. And it re-randomizes itself every floor. Yeah, so you, you basically got like a 50-50 chance at every floor of it being good or bad. Most of the time it's going to be moderate. Okay. Um... So, the head of operations had to come down and radio into the miners, saying, Hey, yeah, sorry, uh, Panic Pendant is an on-hit item. Oh, for fuck's sake, I just bought it, you stupid twat I of a game. I tried to tell you, I tried to tell you. Yeah, Panic, also remember that picking up armor as the shade gives him a small but permanent damage upgrade. Oh, shit, I forgot about that completely. So it is worth uh, maybe spending a small amount of money to get some armor from the shop. It's the worst broken remnant positioning I've ever seen. Stop. I do like the broken remnant thing, but I do think the circles can be very, very big in some very small rooms, and it's just... It makes some rooms feel almost impossible. <laughs> Yeah, so, head of operations came down, radioed into the miners, Hey, sorry, it's gonna take a little while to get your order in because, uh, the current only person working in cargo is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, she was so right that I couldn't be offended. Uh, I didn't feel I was allowed to be offended. Yeah. Because of how correct she was in that assertion that I was an idiot. <laughs> this guy literally doesn't know how to do any of his job. Fortunately, though, there weren't very many more um, requests. In fact, the miners went strangely silent after I failed to get the plasma <laughs> to them. So oh, I no. assume that means they were satisfied. Yeah, very satisfied. That's all you can presume. Yeah. I mean, in all seriousness, they probably all died because I wasn't able to get them the plasma they, they desperately they de needed. Because they desperately needed supplies, and you were so incompetent at your job that you couldn't get them it. <laughs> yes, I was not able to supply them. That's pretty funny. I mean, I, so I just sort of spent the rest still. of the time sitting around in uh, in cargo waiting for reports. It was a there was not a many people on this round of the game, so it was a pretty slow kind of uh, session. Yeah, which meant I just sort of got to, to sit around and fuck around and see how like a little bit about the machines. But um, there were a few more requests that I had to sort of be like, you know, I'm gonna push a button. And if it gets you what you need, <laughs> then you're welcome. Then, then good, but if not, I can't do much more than that. What the fuck Are was that? Are you fucking kidding me? Who made that room? You need to die. Please. <laughs> oh Someone put an explosive God. barrel next to the door. My, my fucking armor of knives, whatever the item's called, knife shield, immediately exploded it and killed me. Someone needs to take a quick bath and a fucking toaster bath. Fucking goddamn, I'm annoyed. That's so bullshit. Wait, 
a Please. quick bath in a toaster bath. A quick bath in a... You know what I meant. They need to get in a bath with a fucking turned on toaster and a bottle of water. I bet it would be a turned on toaster. Do, do, do you know what's the fucking most terrible part about that? I probably fucking what? made that room. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that's beautiful. Whenever a bullshit room comes up that I don't recognize, it's almost always mine. I went through a stage of being an absolute flaming retard when it came to making rooms. Jesus, calm down. <laughs> I did, to be fair. My rooms were terrible for a long time. I got better, though. Oh, he's so small. But I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just salty as hell. That room was actually pretty good. And I'm salty as hell that I just died to that bullshit. Like, Armor of Nice is such a good item for this character. But it turned out to be my demise. The knife giveth and the knife taketh away. <laughs> Anyways, before your story was rudely interrupted by the Turtle Salt Factory, carry on. Are you fucking- oh. That's just how the enemy works, I can't believe you forgot that. Um... It's just how yeah, so works. I just sort of- mm. <laughs> I just sort of spent the most of the round in um in cargo chilling with the sloth because uh, there was there's a, a pet sloth in the cargo bay for some reason and you were just mimicking him eventually just taking naps all day the, doing nothing the power started going out and then the <laughs> gravity started going out and were you the, not uh, supplying anyone break... with power. That's not my job. The engineers are the ones who are supposed to maintain the reactor. But, um, head of uh, operations came down again and began to sort of poke around in the maintenance tiles and said, someone's been cutting the, like, power wires. So, she was running around, like, frantically jerry-rigging systems <laughs> to set up uh power for these parts of the station and i think she sort of gave up on fixing the gravity so i just sort of had to float around with a sloth <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> and then the janitor started coming to me like not not calling me but directly coming to cargo and asking for stuff except was he asking he, for more asses? he wasn't this was a different janitor <laughs> he was asking for uh Guns. Oh, that's not what Janitors need. He walks in, oh, like slam, me. slams a bunch of uh, uh, of uh, chips on the table, like computer chips, and says, "These are the budget chips for every department." <laughs> so this janitor went and stole. Every single department's budget comes to me, slams them down on the desk, and says, Give me some guns. We need guns. <laughs> Is he trying to start a revolution? I was like, um, <laughs> why do you a need mutiny. guns? And he said, I, I asked, why do you need guns? For the war. <laughs> what war? The coming war. Well, <laughs> what's the coming war? The one that's coming. <laughs> he was very uh, evasive. Yeah, he did not want to. He did not want to answer. Was it just a Janet uprising? By the way, that's another thing that I don't, that I haven't really asked, and not quite sure if I understand. Was there only ever one person per role, or were the ships huge and had like five janitors, five chemists, sort of thing? Or was it one some, person per role? Some, some roles could have multiple people. Others, others, especially management roles, could only have one. So you could have as many. Um, assistance as you can fit but there's only like a like a, there's a limit on some of them yeah like there's only one head of operations of course yeah and I, there was only one janitor on this station at the time so janitor comes in he get he he slams down like millions of credits Quest a ton of money. And then uh, he goes... Uh, so so I, I sort of just tell him, you know, what I've been telling everyone. Well, you know, here's the console. Have fun. 
<laughs> Bronze amulet. It's pretty good. Nice. Pretty interesting. But it will be dangerous for the shade. Why? What does it do? It shrinks enemies, so you can step on them to kill oh, them. But okay. stepping on them means means getting close to them, which for yeah. the shade would be risky. Of course, yeah. So yeah, I just sort of let him use the uh, the cargo console. <laughs> he ordered a shit ton of weaponry, which arrived, and he took like a, a flamethrower and like a grenade launcher, and he was like. He ordered this ship full of weapons, took two things, and then left. <laughs> and he was like, you can have the rest. And I was like, thanks! Fucking hell. <laughs> this guy seems like a loose cannon. So did he start, like, an uprising on mutiny or something? <laughs> don't know that's the scariest thing <laughs> he left and nothing happened <laughs> i don't know what he he's did he's still with the plotting gun. to this day now and, and the thing is right some stuff did happen on that round that i didn't you know get to see for example uh what when the when things become like so bad they're beyond saving someone in a management role uh the the highest ranking officer can you know declare okay we're evacuating yeah in which case everyone on the shuttle everyone on the station will get to a an emergency shuttle to leave and so yeah. sort of your goal is to perform your job but also to survive to the emergency shuttle mm -hmm. because even though there's no, like, set time on when the shuttle arrives, just with the nature of things, the shuttle will arrive. Yeah. Things are going to go pear-shaped. Oh, that hit me. God damn it. Yeah, things are gonna go wrong. You're gonna have to deal with that. So, yeah, eventually with all the um, sabotage, power outages, and sheer incompetence, since it was a slow day, uh, the person in command, I don't remember who it was, it might have been the head of operations who was the highest ranking, or it was someone else, they just decided, you know what, uh, we're just going to leave, we're going <laughs> to leave this round here, we're going to order an evacuation, everyone to the shuttle. So I went to the shuttle, and I, uh, there was a nuke. Oh my god. In the, uh, in the, uh, shuttle bay. And someone was freaking out over it. And then the nuke turned into a chair. <laughs> and then, it, then the nuke turned into a key card. And then it uh, revealed its true form as a writhing mass of amorphous flesh. Oh my god. It a so it turns out one of the bosses had turned himself into this weird gelatinous goo mimic creature while yeah. no one was looking. <laughs> Polymorph. For one, what the hell is this? Why do I get an infinite I don't know, I didn't make it. Okay. Seems terrible. Um, is this worth grabbing? I don't know. It's a bunny weapon. Probably is then. Oh, this is the weird one that uses, like, max ammo. Yeah, I don't even think bunny knows how it works. It's a, it's a bit jank. It's a little bit janky. But yeah, it seems like, so, uh, um, seems like shit was going down. <laughs> yeah, so we all got on the shuttle and left, and then someone set the shuttle on fire. Oh my god. Was it by any chance the, the jester? He's just like the clown. He's like, it's funny. I don't think we had a clown on that round. God. Thank God. <laughs> I also remember one point, uh, I was crawling around in the walls because I was up to no good. And, uh... I met a clown in the walls, 
You mad he said, clown. <laughs> just in the- Yeah. The, you, you basically found fucking it. <laughs> just chilling. He's like, hey, friend! Are you <laughs> interested in any legal fighting ring? You betcha, buddy. <gasps> I'm in, Anton. Hello. Why is the club in this guy's pool? I'm not sure. Or does this guy just pull from, like, I think he every sells... item? Well, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he just pulls from every item. I'm not sure. But yeah, the clown took me to an illegal fighting ring in hidden in the walls. Basically, it was like a, a cockfighting ring, but instead of <laughs> cockfighting, it was uh, taking assistance and making them fight to the death. Which was surprisingly the second time I'd seen a clown do that. <laughs> Fuck it, hell. The first time it happened inside of the bar, a clown had started setting up electric fences around the stage. <laughs> and I was just sort of sitting there, watching, like, and wondering when this minute. madness would end. Oh, you utter fucking shithead piece of fuck. You fucker. You... I can't tell if you're talking to me or the boss. I'm talking to myself, cunt. God, that was such a stupid death, you fucking moron. Use a blank, you... Ugh. I'm so annoyed at myself for that. That was such a dumb death. Anyways, continue. Yeah, so pretty much every time I've played, I've come away with an insane story. <laughs> it definitely seems like it, yeah. Did you go through a period of playing time. it a lot, or have you just been kind of like yeah. intermittently jumping on and off the uh, game? I did go through a period of playing it a lot, yeah. So, another time, I uh, I decided to play Clown. Because I wanted to see what it was like, and the power was intoxicating. <laughs> just being able to be an absolute gremlin run around the ship doing whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> At one point, I decided it would be really funny, because, let's be honest, nobody trusts a clown. Yeah, I can't imagine they do. So what if I just started helping and being <laughs> genuinely just to, benevolent? Just to, yeah, just to make everyone super suspicious of what the fuck you're trying to they do. Would... Yes, I, I played as a clown who didn't say anything. I just played... As you a just, mute clown. You just ominously helped people and they're like, what the fuck is going- what is he plotting? <laughs> when am I going to die? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I did and it was quite fun. <laughs> I, I helped the botanist and the botanist rewarded me with bananas. <laughs> That's amazing. Because in Space Station 13 lore, clowns like bananas. All right. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like how, how monkeys are stereotyped as liking bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but clowns are more like banana peel, slip and fall prank yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of reasoning. Another time when I was playing is oh, uh, yeah, that's just a little electric laser. I don't know why I made it. It doesn't look very good. I'm sorry. Don't judge me. I think it looks decent. It's pretty strong. I wanted to reference Forager. So that's a, oh, yeah, one yeah. of the wands from Forager. It's a small flaw. See, look, he's back all, all three times. He's always here. Where's he gone? Yeah, so an, um, another time when I was playing as Clown, I had the idea for a, a great joke. I decided that I wanted to turn the medical wing into a jungle. <laughs> so I took every potted plant from around the station and just set them up in the <laughs> foyer of the medical wing. 
<laughs> Eventually, I had a pretty good patch of greenery. But I wasn't <laughs> did, done. Did, did everyone actually, like, do people know you were doing it? Or was, was people unaware as to why the medical room just kept filling up with plants? <laughs> I don't think they realized it was me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, however, some people who did realize it was me started to get in on the fun because if there's one thing <laughs> departments in this game like, it's trolling each other. What this do? You give it uh, money uh, and it gives you a shop discount. So it, it's 10 casings at first and it increases by 10 casings for each use like the YV shrine. Okay. But you can use it multiple <clears throat> times for a greater and greater discount. I'll check out what's in my shop and see if I want to invest. Oh god, I'm probably going to die here. This boss is so hard. It it permanently sets your uh, discount stat so it will affect all. Yeah. Boss is fucking bullshit. Balanced. Fair and balanced. That was, that was super. I love it when a boss fucking rushes me at a million miles an hour from off screen. <laughs> hit you like a fucking freight train. It would have been really cool to see if that, to, to, to maybe play around with that shrine and some of the cool weapons I had. But no, no. Nah, I'm, I'm jesting, but, but really, he shouldn't be able to do that if he's off screen. That's kind of major bullshit. The, the fact that I entered that fight and knew I was going to die kind of says a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I, I feel like he, that, that guy has, like, two or three attacks that are just, like, especially that one, that's just, like, outright unavoidable damage most of the time. So, I, I said I, I wasn't the only one who joined in. Eventually, other departments started realizing what was going on. The botany department started donating soil <laughs> and seeds. And we started just dumping... The big all plant. sorts of shit. <laughs> just in the medical ward, and it's just full of fucking dirt. It, it was genuinely starting to look like a jungle at this point, and so we decided we wanted animals. <laughs> the zoology department has the power to clone animals. However, uh, the only animals they had on hand right now were a bunch of cows. <laughs> so we put cows in the jungle. Nice. <laughs> the cows had nothing to eat and quickly died. <laughs> so basically, what you did is, you didn't add animals, you added cow corpses to the jungle. Yes, we did. <laughs> Atmospheric. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so imagine the medical... you, go to get, you go to get your like flu jab or your vaccine or like just a general checkup and you just enter this sort of dank fucking misty forest this humid forest covering the room wade through the, the shrubbery room, yes. <laughs> wade through the shrubbery to sit down and read a magazine and see just three or four cow corpses where you should be sitting <laughs> yeah, it was a great prank. I loved doing it. It was very fun. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm still very, I'm still very proud of that one because it yeah, was it, good. like, in terms of what a clown is capable of, it is pretty harmless. But I do think it was also creative. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It didn't, it didn't disrupt much, and it didn't like outright fucking anyone over. But it is one of those things where you walk in, and you're just like, what on earth has happened here? Honestly, the fact that a bunch of other departments joined in was yeah. very fun. If there's one thing departments love doing, it's trolling each other. I can imagine, yeah. So, like, with Another the with the clown being kind of the most free free role to like do whatever you want, is there a, is it pretty hard to manage to be a clown? Because I'm I'm imagining everyone wants to be a clown. Some like you'd be surprised how many people want to just like do something that isn't cause unrepentant chaos? Yes. There's also another class that's meant for entertainment, the mime. Oh yes, you've mentioned the mime to me before, definitely. The mime is a mute who is not allowed to speak in any way, but is allowed to type out hand gestures and stuff. So instead of, instead of typing out text, the mime types out um, the mime, you would write, 
the mime raises their hand to their forehead in an overdramatic display of yeah, shock. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the mime's text is... I, remember I said that text only happens yes. when you can... Uh, within hearing? Uh, I believe that people can only, you know, get that text from the mime if they can see the mime. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. The mime can break their vow of silence, but they lose all magic mime powers. <laughs> Interesting. Why is the it got like upside little... down crosses the uh as the ammo? It's from a game that I played from Ichio, and that in that game the ammo replenishment was upside down crosses. Okay. It, it's from a game called Hellwoom. Hellwoom. Okay, sounds pleasant. It was a pretty good game. The, but I love freaky. the shooting sound of it. <laughs> I'm so blind. Stop being such a flaming huge special. Oh my lord. He's a special boy. But yeah, the mime uh, can create invisible boxes and invisible walls and stuff. But they lose that if they break their vow of silence. Ah, uh, okay. You want to play a different character because you've given the shade a, a fair shake, I'd say. Nah, this is just this is just podcasting now. I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm oh, done. You know, okay. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I can't. I'm getting too depressed. We're just gonna talk for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he, this is your therapy session. It is. I'm, I, this character has given me a fucking brain hemorrhage. Um. Um. But yeah, the there is an unspoken sort of rule though that if the mime breaks their vow of silence, they're all they're um fair game. You can just kill them outright as soon as they talk. Yes, pretty much. That's how <laughs> everyone treats the mime. If Am the mime I, breaks I just, the vow of silence... I don't silence. know why, but I find that so funny to imagine if that was real life. Just, <laughs> there's this mime just like a street performer and he's like doing his promise and then he packs down for the day and like starts speaking and someone just sees him and just fucking shoots him. It's like, no, that's not how mimes work. Watch out! Yeah, um, <laughs> at one point, uh, at, but there's also another aspect to the mime. The mime and the clown are sworn enemies. <laughs> so if the mime and the clown are playing on the same uh, server, they will more than likely wind up combating each other. <laughs> I remember one point there was I kinda, this is kind of funny, you just, everyone's getting on with uh with their own like job everyone's just doing their own thing and then like they're walking down the hallway and just see these a mime and a clown just like fucking battling it out in the most intense furious battle of their life and everyone's just like just trying to get on with their jobs <laughs> and everyone's getting caught in the crossfire well at once i was playing a mime and the clown on that on that game had uh, sort of gone off his rocker he was going around in a clown car, which acted like a black hole. Anyone he drove near was sucked into the clown car. <laughs> and couldn't get out until he stopped. <laughs> oh my god. And everyone was just screaming for help. Uh, eventually I did get out, but the clown decided it would be very funny to... Uh, Push me out an airlock. My so Lord. I I suffocated in the vacuum of space, but I actually got resuscitated after death by one of the uh, doctors, who slammed me in a healing tube to deal with the inevitable brain damage. <laughs> but hell. while I was in the healing tube, things only got worse. <laughs> I watched helplessly from my tube as <laughs> the doctor who was tending to me didn't notice a fucking xenomorph creep up behind him. 
My God. And you were him. <laughs> so I don't know how, I don't know why, but somehow someone in, had released a xenomorph invasion upon the station. <laughs> what the fuck? And so eventually I had to escape my pod and barricaded myself in a um in a storage closet to hide from xenomorphs. <laughs> and eventually like, You're just like, I just wanna play the game and it's just fucking xenomorphs running around killing people. <laughs> the round uh, ended actually before there was a xenomorph breaking down my barrier, but I technically won because I survived. So uh, this, this is one thing that I didn't really understand. You mentioned it earlier. How exactly does it work with rounds? What do you mean by that? I thought it was like a continuous roleplay sort of thing. Basically, at the beginning of a round, a bunch of people uh, pick their roles and join the station. And then they just sort of play through until things get so fucked up that uh, someone in charge elects that uh, we should end this. We should get to the shuttle, everyone. So they get to the shuttle and evacuate, which ends the current round. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, okay. Rounds can last for as long as uh, people are able to maintain them. Yeah. So it really depends on how good people are at fixing the reactor. <laughs> also, once I was on a station that had a um, the, the chaplain go crazy. The chaplain. Yeah. So the station has a church. Ah, uh, okay. And that means that one of the available roles is the chaplain. Are you going to put some music in the background of this, by the way? Because it's going to be quite dull. I'm, I'm booting up Isaac now. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, so... One of the available roles is chaplain, and the chaplain's job is pretty dull. They don't have many special things. Um, they just sort of have to preach. Yeah. But they can pick whatever religion they want to preach. So you could have a Satanist chaplain. Nice. <laughs> Our chaplain had evidently decided that he was worshipping some sort of elder flesh god because he kidnapped a bunch of people murdered them, spattered their entrails all over the chapel and started painting on the walls in their blood. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and, um, honestly, uh... Oh, your mic's gone really weird. I can't hear you at the minute. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hey, I, can hear, is... I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Was honestly quite relatable. Okay, your mic, your mic's just died. It's just dead. Like it sounds like you're Hello. speaking from underwater. Oh, for f okay, there you go. It's sorted. It's sorted. It's sorted. It's sorted. Hello. There you go. It's sorted. It's sorted. The security department's response to the chaplain becoming a murderous cannibal. Because uh, he was also eating the flesh. Uh, it was <laughs> quite relatable. Nice. They just decided to weld the doors to the chapel shut. <laughs> no, thank you. We'll, have, we'll, we'll be having none of that. Yeah, and the round just sort of continued as normal. Like... <clears throat> There was a, a murderous chaplain welded into the chapel, and it was just like, okay, well, he's been dealt with, so we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna ignore that. Yeah. <laughs> just, we'll just let him, we'll just let him do what he does. Ooh, by the way, if you're watching the Isaac part now, I am, and I'm very confused. It's a new character called the Deleted that essentially has the ability to TM Trainer an item, but he gets to know what it does. I'm going to take normal $3 though, I think. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a very, very cool character. I see. 
So yeah, he gets to choose if he wants to TM trade or an item. Which of course can lead to some really overpowered items. Birthright. So no longer any negative consequences to bit flipping. Ooh, what the hell? That's insane. That's so powerful. Nice. I don't think I'm able to afford it though, but still. What's what's his tainted version? His tainted version is the del is delete this the the challenge as a character. But isn't that just the? Why not just have the ch channel? Because you can do it as streaks and stuff. And like. It's, I guess. It works as a normal character. It, th th there's some other parts to the character. It's not just delete this, but that's the main gimmick, I think. Honestly, I think it should do some weird fucking crazy meta shit. Like, I don't know. Uh, his items get turned into actual files from your, like, hard drive. <laughs> oh my god. be crazy. But yeah, you can, I gotta say, you can carry on speaking, like, talking while I, um... Play this. I just wanted something to put on in the background so I'm not just sat there looking at a blank screen while we chat. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. gonna say I'm not planning on recording for, for hours. I've got I've got like another like sort of 15, 20 minutes tops, but um Yeah, fair. Um So The Chaplain was just, yeah, the round just went relatively normally. And at one point, uh, I played a sh the chef, whose job is to like make food for yeah, people on course. the station. And I, uh, I, I couldn't figure it out, so I just <laughs> like sort of put like raw meat and donuts on the menu. You're just and... feeding people the worst shit. You're not even really not... feeding them. I'm not good at the game. I never claimed to be good <laughs> at uh, space. Well, you did, I'm gonna say you did say you'd just take rolls willy nilly, whether you could do them or not. So that makes sense. Uh, I wasn't good, but I did have a lot of fun. Yeah. Definitely and, good uh, at having fun. On my chef uh, attempt, I was uh, haunted by monkeys. <laughs> okay. On each... what the fuck? On each boss room spawn a siren. <laughs> oh my god. Give it a go, why not? Give it a go. <laughs> so we're, get, we're getting shot speed and an old chest on every floor. Um, charges, active items, even if the room doesn't contain, uh, increase, decrease, look, each cash room spawns an extra red chest, you already entered the current floors, okay, we might as well take that. Two slipped worm. Two slipped worm. Each floor spawn a dinger, lose four cent. <laughs> okay. Again, some damage. This is strange. <laughs> this is strange. Yeah, so... There were a couple of monkeys on the ship. And the monkeys were actually being played by people, if I recall correctly. Oh, really? I didn't know you could play as animals. I think it depends on the current rules, but you can play as a bunch of different things if the, uh, if the game allows it. Um... I think you to play as something like a monkey, you might have to die and just possess the monkey. But regardless, uh, I was being fucked with by a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> and I was chasing them around with a cleaver and trying to put them in the oven. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Every 10 seconds, oh my god. What the fuck is this? Every three Yume's rooms use Book of Virtues. Every 10 seconds use Book of Secrets. Also, it had an active on use effect. Yeah, it said spawn three raglins whenever I use my active. 
Basically, I have full mapping all the time because every 10 seconds it uses Book of Secrets. It's kind of funny. On each ultra secret room, get Damocles. First hit of each room, get a temporary tech two. Each floor spawn two times squirts. I guess I'll just take the normal baby because the thingy version doesn't seem that good. Yeah. Like babies, babies, <sighs> baby babies, baby boys. Oh, babies. Itty bitty babies. Um. What the? Is yeah, that? Uh, Repentance Plus adds a bunch of new chests and new hearts that currently are exceedingly overpowered and exceedingly common. Um, so I don't really know what's going on with those at the minute. I'm hoping they get they, they get like balanced pretty fucking soon. Because at the minute they're kind of yeah. absurd how strong they are. Yeah, I love the heart pickup that heals me five hearts. Yeah, it's just the, and they're, they're they're really not rare either. They're pretty common. There's quite a few ones. There's um, like there's like a new there's a new soul heart that that like also opens doors in the rooms that it's picked up in. There's a there's a new black heart that gives you a 0 0.1 damage upgrade when you pick it up. There's a new black chest which is essentially an eternal chest for devil deals. Um and, a terrible idea. Uh it, it, I'm going to say it works pretty well. Uh and then there's a there's a new um a new mimic chest which is called like a flesh chest. Is there some, they're, they're, and also there's new uh, bloody rocks, which are basically um, tinted spiked rocks, uh, which they're all pretty interesting ideas. They're just all way too common right now. Right, right. Um. Oh yeah, on that uh, same chef run, I gave the clown a. Uh, ba basically, somebody asked me, "Hey, hey, do you have your uh, your soapstone?" The soapstone is like a thing that you can use to draw on the ground and walls. Some guy came up to me and was like, Hey buddy, do you have your soapstone? <laughs> I'm willing to trade. And I was like, uh, trade for what? And he gave me this like glowing red shard of weird mystic power. Intriguing. And it was like... This is some sort of, like, occult artifact. Yeah. So it occurs to me now, he probably wanted my soapstone to draw sigils or some shit. <laughs> First hit each room, get one wisp and use red key. What the fuck is this? This one's mental. I get a key piece. I get uh, a mum's underwear wisp. I can I use red key. I gain damage, and on black heart, I use the D infinity. What the hell? Gimme. All right. <laughs> this is pretty bizarre. Um. Yeah. So I was like, look at this guy, and I'm like. Yeah, sure, why not? Take my soapstone, I'm not using it. Yeah. But he was using- he and, wanted it for nefarious acts. And, uh, I eventually just, like, donated the, uh, mystic stone to a good cause. Hmm. Which is by- what I mean, I basically gave it to the clown, um, uh, uh, wondering, you know, well, what- you know, whatever happens, it'll be funny. Yeah. He'll do something cool with it. Hopefully. <laughs> Nothing really did come of that, but I love the fact that this guy just completely trusts the chef not to out him <laughs> as some weird cultist. Yeah. Like, this is the guy I trust with And he was right. And he was right that I didn't tell anyone except the clown. <laughs> God damn. Is there like a, a particular person or people that you used to play with, or do you used to like just hop in random servers a lot of the time? Hop in random servers? Yeah. I'd imagine that's kind of the best way to play that game, really. A new set of people each time. Because everyone's yeah, going to yeah. play different, aren't they, of course.
Yeah, it definitely seems like I a played... game like that's gonna give you just a fuck ton of stories. At one point, I played a doctor who didn't know how to doctor. <laughs> oh, every five rooms use the D4. That seems dangerous. This is one of my secret rooms. Why the hell would you spawn mega hearts in here, turtle? You know they're overpowered. Oh, they came from a chest. Ooh, I get. Oh my god, I can't believe you did this. I get the the horse while I'm in this room, while I'm in boss rooms, but it doesn't give me flight. It's just a visual. Good. It's just a, it's, it's a comfort horse. After 10 hits, get three blue spiders. Yes, very good. After nine hits, get a... T <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, yeah, no thank you. <laughs> Each floor spawn two sp small blast assists after 40 seconds spawn a big burning. Yeah, that's, that's just an awful deal. No thank you. Yeah. Oh my god. I, remember... I gained uh... so many tears on starting this floor. Holy, holy fuck. At one point... I was, um, so I was playing, I think this was on the, actually that same run where I was playing a doctor who couldn't doctor. Yeah. It didn't really matter because the station was already in chaos and there wasn't really <laughs> much I could do to make it worse. Yeah. It was just already fucked from the start. So people were coming to me with these grievous injuries and all I could really say was like well um have you considered rest and relaxation <laughs> spawn a butt slicker go for it why not <clears throat> Oh, it's one of those dudes, okay. Yeah, so, uh... What had actually happened was Todd Howard had gone insane. <laughs> Somebody had gone around the station on a killing spree. A My murderous gosh. rampage. Blood was everywhere. The hallway slick with it. Oh my god. It was it was just viscerally horrifying. Like, Jesus Christ, it looked like an American school. And <laughs> Oh, the good boys altar. Yeah, good boys. Good boys altar. That's so funny. The good boys altar. God damn, that sounds like a, good, a Catholic pedo if I've ever heard of one. Good boys kneel before the altar. What the hell's Gaper? And by the L2? altar, I mean my L2. penis. Oh my god. Gaper 12 is probably some weird Gaper variant, like maybe like the Hush Gapers or the Drowned Gapers or. Did it so say on. spawn one every 12 seconds? I think it did, didn't it? Well, you know, you'll find out. You'll find out soon enough. We got that good boys altar going. Yeah, the altar of the good boys. He's hoping that um, Gaper 12 is an entity that doesn't exist and it just crashes the game. <laughs> the, to be fair, the, the creator of this did say, this does not prevent miss, uh, like, uh, delete this crashes. Like, they could still happen. But yeah, uh... So yes, just picture the most horrible, like, survival horror-esque, like, lights flickering, power is low, <laughs> there's blood everywhere, corpses slumped against the walls, body parts piled high, and a, a one lone doctor wandering the halls with no clue what's going on. Just trying to make his way, trying to get on with life. People screaming over the radio that Todd Howard is coming. <laughs> you turn a corner and suddenly you see a message that chills you to your very core. 
scrawled in human blood on the wall of the station. In large letters, it reads, I Skyrim. I Skyrim. That actually happened in one of the games. Someone lost their fucking mind and went around scrawling shit all over the walls. You know, sometimes this happens to <clears throat> me, and I hope that... Does this ever happen to you where you remember something and you're absolutely certain it happened, but you're not, like, 100% sure? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you remember it so very... Actually, I was having a conversation with someone the other day about this, where you remember something so vividly, and then, like, you tell someone that was there... Um, like, in the memory, and they're like, no, that didn't happen. And it turns out it was just, like, an incredibly vivid memory or dream or something that didn't actually happen. I don't have a very good memory. It's genuinely terrible. I forgot how to tie my shoes the other day. Oh, my God. Um, and this has happened to me before, where I will see something... And, uh, I, I'll think, that's really funny. I'll, I'll, I'll hear a story or something. And over years and years, my memory will, be, my memory will be some, become so contorted that hearing that story becomes my own story. Yes, like, I, my, I know my brain that insert, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. inserts just... me into its place. And I just had the horrifying revelation... I really fucking hope that Todd Howard story isn't one of those. <laughs> because it I might... know that that is something that at the very least happened in Space Station 13, but it hit me with the you horrifying could, you revelation. You could have just read it a long time ago, yeah. I could have just read it a long time ago, and my mind is inserting me into that story. I know the exact is, feeling, it's, it's weird, it's isn't it? terrifying, because, well, for one reason, you're losing your mind. For another, uh, you're basically telling lies without even knowing it yeah and for a third if people catch you in the lie because they know what that story is actually from they'll accuse you of lying and you'll feel bad because you didn't mean to but your brain doesn't work <laughs> oh my god i know what you mean though anyways i think we'll end it off there um i wanted to show off that deleted character i did already yeah. show it so for you guys what would have been a few days ago but still Anyways, but yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this nonetheless. This is a bit of a, a weird Gungeon episode, um, but I had fun, um, and I've been loving these um, these stories. They're so good. <laughs> it's just such a wacky game. I love things like that, yeah. though. You know, there's an infinite amount of stories that can come from it, and I like talking about it. Here's hope you don't get, like, assassinated for talking about Space Station 13, <laughs> because people tend to be pretty touchy about that. I imagine it's one of those games that the, the, the hardcore fans are very protective of. Oh, no, definitely, yeah. They don't want more players because yeah, the service yeah, exactly. can barely handle 15. Yeah, I, am, I imagine it's a very... Uh, it, it's kind of like that 2B2T Minecraft server where, like, the hardcore players don't actually want anyone new to join and they try to prevent new people yeah. from joining because they're very protective over what they have. Yeah, that's pretty much a perfect comparison, yes. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this. It was a very, very fun recording session indeed. I'm going to go and have some food now, so I will speak to you all in a little bit. Bye-bye.